Even with so many DevOps tools crowding the market, Jenkins is still the leader in terms of usage and popularity. In this multi-part Jenkins tutorial, we will become expert of Jenkins, both in terms of application as well as answering interview questions. We will start from basic and end with advanced concepts. We will learn how to run CloudFormation using Jenkins, how to deploy applications into Kubernetes, as well as how to automate your continuous integration and continuous deployment pipeline. However, all great things start with the installation. So in this video, we will learn how to install Jenkins on Docker. We'll create a sample pipeline. We will install Blue Ocean plugin, explore why do we need this Blue Ocean plugin, as well as creating a sample pipeline using this plugin. All right, let's get started. There are many ways to install and run Jenkins. You can grab the Jenkins installer package and run it in your laptop, desktop, or server. You can grab the Jenkins machine image and run it in cloud virtual machine such as Amazon EC2. However, the most popular way to install and run Jenkins is to get the Jenkins container image and run it as container. One of the big advantage of running Docker container is you can run it in any platform that supports this Docker container. So you can run Jenkins in Kubernetes, Docker Swarm, or even your local machine running Docker. That is the power of our lovely blue whale. Okay, so let's do this with a demo. So first, we need a Jenkins Docker container image. And to do that, we have to go where all the Docker container lives in the internet, Docker Hub. So I'm going to dockerhub.com and then in the search bar, I'm going to type in Jenkins. Then click the first Jenkins official image. Now scroll down a little bit and this is the important part. This image has been deprecated for over two years in favor of this Jenkins slash Jenkins colon LTS image. So we are just going to click this and it is gonna take you to the most current image. So as you can see, this is a fully functional Jenkins server based on the weekly and LTS releases. Now before we run Docker pool or Docker run, click on this documentation for usage options. So I'm going to right click and open link in a new tab. If you scroll down, there are different ways to execute the command and we are going to use this third command. So to go over different options, minus D runs the Docker in the background. Minus V is an important option. This creates a Docker volume on the host machine. So when you run your Jenkins, you create user ID password, uh, you create pipelines, you install new plugins, all that information is stored in the Docker volume that will survive the container stop, restart, and deletion. The Jenkins underscore home will be the name of the Docker volume and slash var slash Jenkins underscore home is where it will get the data from the running container. And then we have two different port mappings. The first port mapping 8080 colon 8080 simply maps the container port 8080 to the local host port 8080. By default, Jenkins exposes itself in this port. So we can run localhost colon 8080 to access our Jenkins server. The second port option, which is mapping 50,000 port number from container to 50,000 in the localhost, is useful if you want to connect to a slave agent. If you run the builds on the primary node out of the box, then we don't need this, but it's easier to just copy paste and run the command, so we'll keep it for now. And finally, the name of the container image, Jenkins slash Jenkins colon LTS. So I'm going to copy this command, then go back to my terminal. You should have Docker up and running in your local desktop. To validate, I'm just going to run Docker version. Okay, as you can see, Docker is running in my local desktop. 
So now I'm going to paste the command and press enter. To validate if our container is running, run docker ps. Okay, and you can see our container is up and running. We need to get a authentication key to access it from the website. For that, we need to go to docker logs. So we're going to run docker logs and name of the container ID. So I'm just going to copy this container ID. And you should see a section like this. Jenkins initial setup is required. An admin user has been created. Please use the following password to proceed to installation. So I'm going to double click this and then copy this. And then I'm going to access localhost colon ATAT. So I'm going to open another tab, type in localhost colon ATAT. Here we go. And I'm going to paste the administrator password that we copied from the Docker logs. Click continue. And then select install suggested plugins. And it is going to install all the recommended plugins. After all the plugins are installed, you will get this screen. So create a admin user, fill up the fields. Uh, just remember the username and password. Every time you stop the container and restart it, you need to give that user ID and password to log back in. So I'm going to click save and continue. Click save and finish. Jenkins is ready. Click start using Jenkins. So this is classic Jenkins UI. So let's create a simple pipeline. To click pipeline, click new item, then click pipeline and give a name of the pipeline. I'll just give the name test pipeline and then click OK. And if you scroll down, this pipeline script is the heart of Jenkins. And we're going to learn more about this. This is where you type in the steps that Jenkins need to execute. So you can either type this in here or grab the pipeline script or Jenkins file from a source code manager such as GitHub. Uh, for now, I'm just going to paste this sample pipeline script, which is just going to have uh, three different stages, build, test and deploy. And each stage is just going to echo out uh, these different words, building, testing, and deploying. Click save. And then to build it, click build now. And the execution results will be under build history. To see the logs, which is where you will spend a lot of time, uh, click the number, number one, because we just ran it for the first time, and then click console output. And here you can see this is saying running on Jenkins and then it just echoed out building, testing and deploying. And then the job finished successfully. Alternatively, you can also access the logs from the stage view. You can click each stage and click logs and it is going to show you the output from each stage. This is how you install Jenkins on Docker and create a simple pipeline. At the end of the day, you still need to learn how to write Jenkins file and writing Jenkins file can be clunky. And that's where Blue Ocean comes into the picture. So what is Blue Ocean? Blue Ocean is a plugin of Jenkins which can visually create and edit pipeline using UI. And this is the kicker. Blue Ocean generates the Jenkins files for you. The other advantages are native integration for branch and pull requests, which enables maximum developer productivity when collaborating on code with others in GitHub and Bitbucket. It enables easier error detection. If you worked with Jenkins, you probably have spent hours going through the infamous console output Blue Ocean shows you the error in an easy to identify manner. 
You can also personalize Blue Ocean to suit the role-based needs of each member of the team. Let's jump into a Blue Ocean demo. So we already installed Jenkins on Docker. So now we are going to install Blue Ocean plugin and we'll create the same simple pipeline using Blue Ocean. Let's install Blue Ocean plugin. To install plugin, we are back to our Jenkins server that we just installed and ran a sample pipeline. So on the top left, you will see this dashboard icon. And you will also see a tiny downward arrow. Click that arrow, go to manage Jenkins, and from there, under system configuration, click manage plugins. Then click the available tab, and in the filter search bar, type in Blue Ocean. So you can see the plugin Blue Ocean appears at the top. So click this checkbox and on the bottom, select Install without restart. So it's gonna take a minute or two to install all the Blue Ocean plugin components. And once everything is success, you click go back to the top page. You can start using the Blue Ocean plugin right away. You do not need to restart the Jenkins. So I'm going to click this link. And now on the left, you can see this open Blue Ocean option. So I'm going to click this and then click new pipeline. So it will ask, where do you store your Jenkins file? And as I mentioned, Blue Ocean can create your Jenkins file. So if I go to my personal GitHub, so I have this empty repository, Jenkins Blue Ocean, and you can see there is nothing in this repository. So going back to the Blue Ocean console, I'm gonna click GitHub, and you have to give your GitHub access token. Uh, if you don't have one, click create an access token here. And it is going to ask you for the login password for your GitHub. Then you will land up in this page and you have to give a note. I'll say Jenkins Blue Ocean Access. Keep everything as is, scroll down, click generate token. Copy this token. This token is gonna go away, go away, so make sure you copy this. Go back to the Jenkins screen, paste your access token, click connect. Select your GitHub name, and then you have to choose the repository. So I'm going to choose the empty repository, Jenkins Blue Ocean. And then I'm going to click create pipeline. This is the visual editor to create pipeline and this is only available in Blue Ocean. So you click this plus sign. So this will be the name of the stage. If we want to replicate what we did in the classic Jenkins UI, so I'm going to name this stage build and then I'm going to click add step and you have multiple options what you want to do in this Step, for example, run a shell script, print a message, uh, build a job, etc. So to simply print a message, I'm going to click print message and the message for our case will be building. You can also do parallel stages. So if you click this plus, this is going to create a parallel stage. Let's say for fun, we are going to name it parallel build. Under steps, I'm going to add a print message, parallel build, and then I'm going to add the testing stage. Similarly, I will add a deploy stage. Now click save and run. So Blue Ocean gives you a really nice UI and you can click each of the stage and steps to see what's going on. So you can see on the build step, it printed this building message on the parallel build. Uh, it printed the parallel build test, 
deploy, etc. So here is the kicker. As I was building the pipeline from the UI, it created the Jenkins file for me. So if I go back to my repository and refresh, you can see Jenkins Blue Ocean added this Jenkins file. So if I click this, you get the Jenkins file. So this is a very simple example. Uh, you can do shell script, build, etc. from the UI, which is very intuitive. And later on, we will explore some other features of this Blue Ocean plugin. As you can see, Jenkins file is the heart of Jenkins. Even though Blue Ocean helps you create Jenkins files using the UI, but in interview and real world projects, you need to know the components of Jenkins file. You need to know what is the difference between declarative versus scripted Jenkins file, declarative Jenkins file components, as well as multiple Jenkins files examples, including Maven, etc. So all this and more will be covered in the part two of this tutorial series. So don't forget to click the like and the subscribe button. All right, guys and girls, I will see you in the next part.